Good morning, boys and girls. Today's day one ELA lesson, nonfiction versus fiction, is for all of the first graders at Bethune Elementary School. Our objective for today is to be able to explain major differences between books that tell stories and books that give information. Our I can statement reads, I can identify the difference between fiction and nonfiction texts. First, we're going to start by talking about what a nonfiction book is. Nonfiction books are books that help people learn about real things. Here are some examples of nonfiction books. Who was Rosa Parks? Stories about real people, amazing snakes, dolphins and sharks, stories about reptiles and mammals, and planets. These are all stories about things that are real. In nonfiction books, boys and girls, everything in the book is based on real information. Real information or true information is information that is not fake. It is not made up. For example, if we look to the right, we see a book about wolves. It says there are three kinds of gray wolves. The most common wolf is the gray wolf. There are more than 30 kinds of gray wolves, and they are not just gray. They are brown, black, tan, and white, too. So now, boys and girls, we just learned some new facts about wolves because nonfiction books are full of new and amazing facts to help us learn about different topics. Now, nonfiction books do not have any talking animals. Nothing can be made up or fake. And there are no things that did not happen in a real life. For example, we know that this Pete the Cat book is not real because cats do not wear shoes and they definitely do not play guitars. So we know that Pete the Cat rocking in my school shoes would not be a nonfiction book because it is made up and not real. But this book entitled Cats on the Right is using a real picture of cats on the front cover. So we know that this book is most likely going to be nonfiction and we will probably learn new facts about cats. Next, boys and girls, nonfiction books also have text features. Let's review the table of contents. The table of contents is at the beginning of the book. It tells the reader what is in the book and where to find it in the book. The number tells us which page to look for. For example, if we want to learn about zebras, we would turn to page six. Diagram. A diagram is a picture with labels. Here we see a vine, leaves, seeds, pulp, skin, and stem. Next, we have a caption. A caption is a chart explanation under a picture or photograph that gives information. Our caption reads, a pumpkin is ready to harvest when the vines turn brown. It also has a glossary. The glossary is at the end of the book. It tells the reader the meaning of important words. For example, apple. An apple is a fruit that grows on trees. Map. A map helps the reader understand where something is. The author might use a map to show where an animal lives or where the tallest mountain is. Bold print. Bold print in a book tells the reader that the word is important. The words that are in bold are usually found in the glossary. If you look right here, we see the word pilgrims is in bold print. That means that this word is very important. Last, we have photographs. Photographs are different from pictures we usually see in fiction books. Photographs are real pictures, just like the one on top. Taken by a photographer. The picture on the bottom is a drawing. This is the type of picture that we would see in a fiction book. Now, boys and girls, we're going to talk about fiction books. Fiction books are make-believe stories. Everything in the book is not true. It has made up parts or parts that did not actually happen. For example, if we look at our story entitled The Cat in the Hat, by Dr. Seuss, and we read this page, it says, put me down, said the fish. This is no fun at all. Put me down, said the fish. I do not wish to fall. 
Now, if you look on this page, boys and girls, you see that the fish is talking. And he's telling a cat to put him down. And we know that fish can't talk. So this lets us know that this story is made up. It's not real. And this means that it is a fiction book. Fiction books are also composed of story elements. It has characters. The characters tell who is in the story. It can be animals, people, or things. It also has a setting. A setting tells when and where the story takes place. It can take place in the daytime or at night. It can take place in a forest or at a house. It also has a plot. The plot tells us what happens in the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. Now, here are some examples of fiction books. We have Arthur's Birthday, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, and Pete the Cat, I Love My White Shoes. And boys and girls, we know we all love Pete the Cat stories. Now, next it says fiction books may have talking animals, magic, or mythical creatures, just like this dragon. And here's one of my favorite books, How to Train Your Dragon. Now, we know that dragons are not real boys and girls. So this story, How to Train Your Dragon, would also be fiction. Now, let's do a quick review about fiction versus nonfiction. In fiction books, they have characters that are not real. The story is made up. It has a setting, a beginning, middle, and end, a problem and a solution, and illustrations. An example of a fiction book would be Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Now, on the right side, we see nonfiction. It says nonfiction stories are real and true. It gives information. It teaches us about the world. It has text features like a heading, captions, page numbers, and real pictures. And here's an example of a nonfiction text. It's called Bears and Their Dens. Now, boys and girls, let's review before we exit our lesson. Today, we learn about how to identify the difference between fiction and nonfiction text. Now, I would like for you to click on the link below this video and fill out your Microsoft form to answer the questions and submit your form back to your teacher.